Hello, this is Leanne McGlynn with McGlynn Institute Neonatal. Today in our neonatal procedure series, we will discuss peripheral arterial puncture. Peripheral arterial puncture is a procedure that is done frequently within the NICU. The indications include arterial blood gas determination, sampling for routine laboratory tests when venous and capillary sampling are not suitable, sampling for ammonia, lactate, or pyruvate levels, or if you need to obtain a large quantity of blood. Contraindications include coagulation defects, circulatory compromise in the extremity, inappropriate arteries such as use of the radial artery if collaterals are inadequate, the ulnar artery with poor collaterals, infection or inflammation when cannulation of that vessel in, is anticipated, or use of the peripheral arteries on the ipsilateral arm in an infant with congenital heart disease requiring a shunt via the subclavian artery. The preferred peripheral site is the radial artery if ulnar collaterals are intact. The posterior tibial artery is also satisfactory. You can also use the dorsalis pedis artery, but is often small or absent and may be inaccessible in some infants. You should use the brachial artery only if the indication is urgent. Temporal arteries should be avoided and ulnars should be avoided because of the risk of impaired circulation to the hand. Equipment and supplies often depend on the blood work needed. You will definitely need sterile gloves and a 23 to 25 gauge butterfly needle, as well as your appropriate syringes, your preheparinized blood gas syringe if needed, and your cleaning solution per unit protocol. You'll also need two by two gauze pads, and you can optionally use a high intensity fiber optic light for transillumination. For pain control, consider oral sucrose solution. Prior to performing peripheral arterial puncture on the radial artery, you'll need to assess for collateral circulation in the older artery. You do this through a modified Allen's test. This is done by raising the neonate's arm above heart level, occluding both arteries simultaneously. You then gently rub the palm to cause blanching. Next, you release the ulnar artery while maintaining pressure on the radial artery. Observe for return of color, the palm should return to normal color or flush within 10 to 15 seconds. At this point, you can cleanse your site per unit protocol with items such as alcohol, chloroprep, or povidone iodine. With the bevel of the needle up, position the needle against arterial blood flow. Enter the skin first at a 15 to 30 degree angle, and you may need to reposition to a 45 degree angle for deeper arteries. Once blood return is seen, stop advancing the needle and hold that position. Allow the blood to slowly flow back via arterial pressure until it reaches the end of the hub. At this point, you can then attach your syringe and slowly withdraw without collapsing the vessel until you have reached your desired amount of blood. Using your two by two gauze, cover the site, remove the needle from the skin, and hold pressure. Apply firm local pressure for one to three minutes to achieve complete homostasis and inspect fingers for circulatory compromise. Now it's your turn. Let us know how this video helped you in your actual clinical practice. Looking for an NRP, procedural skills, or simulation-based training course? McGlynn Institute Neonatal has you covered. Give us a call or text at 704-728 4961 or email Dr. McGlynn at drmcglynn at mcglynninstitute.com. Look forward to hearing from you soon.